Our next session is brought to us by WDO's Young Designer Circle, which is a program that WDO launched in early 2020 as a way to harness the creativity and ambition of young designers around the world. I am so excited to have a few representatives of the 2022-2023 Young Designers Circle joining us today to share their thoughts on the importance of female leadership in design. The session will be moderated by former YDC member and now mentor, Relitza Diana Debra. Relitza is a designer and educator with over a decade of experience in consulting, both locally and internationally. She is a lecturer at Kwame Nkrumi University of Science and Technology in Ghana and a facilitator of eMERGE Africa Network, University of Cape Town, South Africa. She serves as a committee member and juror on several design organizations, such as Open Design Africa, Design Ghana, Pan-African Design Institute, Type Directors Club, Cumulus, and DSIS Network. She is a co-founder and acts as a technology and innovation specialist for in Inclusive Tech Group, a not-for-profit organization in Ghana. Her research in interests include design, social innovation, sustainability, human-computer interaction, and ed tech for social transformation. Welcome, Relitza. The floor is yours to introduce these three inspiring young designers that are joining us today. Thank you so much for, for that lovely introduction. And with me here is our lovely YDC team. And we have Samira, um, Nayara, Pedro, all joining us today. And today we are going to have a very great time about um, leadership. And before we start, I'd like to um, hand over the mic to Samira to tell us a little bit about herself and then she would hand over to the others whilst we get um, highlights about today's session. So Samira, over to you. Thank you, Rilita. Hi, I'm Samira. I'm the director of Need Lab. Um, I'm also an Obama leader and I work with different communities around the world um, in designing housing and public space issues that they're facing in the community. And do this through architecture and participatory design methods. And for the past seven years, I've been um, traveling around the world, um, living with different communities and working for them. And I'm very happy to be part of the World Design Organization's um, Young Designer Circle. And I would like to invite Pedro next to share his um, experience. Hi everyone, thanks a lot and thanks Samira. I'm Pedro, I'm from Cartagena, Southern Spain, but I live, I currently, I currently live in Valencia, uh, a bit more to the, to the north. And I started as an, in, as an industrial designer, working in research and development, technological development, also furniture and habitat sector. Then I moved to Cooperation for Development, where I've worked mainly in communications. And right now, I'm co-founder of Mono Studio, and we do strategic design for a circular economy and social innovation in Valencia. And again, it's a real pleasure to be here, to be part of uh, World Design uh, Organization's Young Designer Circle to, to get to know all these amazing people and diverse people. And thank you all. Ria, over to you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nyaya Njoroke a human-centered designer based in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, and I've had experience working in the healthcare space, uh, designing healthcare from nutrition to adolescent sexual reproductive health rights to medical devices, um, and also climate change. And I'm really honored to be part of yeah, the WDU's Young Designer Circle. And I'm really looking forward to what the next 18 months hold. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rianne. That was very beautiful to hear from you across the world. And um, we are super excited that um, you'll be sharing experiences about leadership um, for us today. Can you um, tell us a little bit about um, empathy-based leadership and um, 
I would like to open to the floor for, for our colleagues to, to share their thoughts. Either Pedro or Samira, would you like to share your thoughts on empathy-based leadership? Do you want to start, Samira? Okay. Okay, um, thank you, Pedro. Um, for me, for a long time, um, when I looked up to other leaders in the industry, it felt like um, skills came first, uh, then came the experience, the CV of, uh, of an individual, and then um, the title and uh, what they're presenting, which organization or um, position of power they're holding. Um, design is filled with a lot of emotions, experiences, and uh, lived uh, life. And um, that I felt uh, really informs how empathetically a leader, an individual can lead an organization. And um, in, in my personal career, I was unfortunate enough to see that. And as a member of um, YDC and uh, World Design Organization, I would like to advocate for it. Uh, if we don't show the emotions that uh, enable us to design the need the world has, how can we lead the world in the direction we want um, it to go? So that to me is empathetic leadership, um, is bringing those emotions that um, help us lead today, help us um, feel um, the pain and uh, develop solutions that are needed to address that pain. And uh, wearing that on my collar with pride uh, is what I consider empathetic leadership. And um, I would like to set an example for that and um, lead uh, my group and share with anyone out there um, why it's important. Pedro, do you have something to add? Yeah, as we talked, uh, as, as, as we have talked sometimes, we also need new uh, kinds of leadership in the way that, let's say, traditional or old leadership is based on uh, cold objectives and maybe it's about being really this uh, um, this person of a boss and trying to follow these objectives no matter um, what other people think or what other people can feel about the organization, about the objectives as if everything was a machine. And I think we are moving and we should move actually to a paradigm where organizations are not machines. Humans, we humans are not machines. And we have to bear all of this in mind when we build and design any kind of organization of um, goal. And we should go for, for different kinds of leadership in this way. Um, yeah, well, I I couldn't I couldn't agree more with my colleagues, and I believe I, how I see design is that it's a principle, just like for example gravity. Um, whether you know about it or you don't know about it, if you stand uh, on top of a building and jump, it's going to work on you. Um, and so how I see that's how I see design, and a big part of it is bringing our whole selves which for a very long time we've we've left behind the emotional part of us or the feminine part of us um and just you know focused on productivity and results and you know all of all of that and for sure it's been a broken system um and yeah so that the, there is for sure a need to bring our emotions in ensuring that you know, we're even empathizing with the different situations that our the people we are designing for um, are experiencing, and in bringing that now the whole part of ourselves. And so, yeah, um, I, I I deeply believe that we we for sure need more empathy. We need more bring our emotional side to to design. I um, mean, in creating whole systems, whole structures, whole products. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you so much for that, Ria. And uh, one of the things that stood out for me was that uh, when you said 
um, we are not um, machines, we are humans. And for that matter, there is a need for us to be empathic towards how we design in our various um, communities, et cetera. So from your view, I'd like you to, to share a little bit, um, why would it be good for society as a whole to actually have a diverse perspective into design leadership? Anybody would like to respond? Yeah, well, I could go. Um, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we for sure we need like a diverse perspective um, in the design space. Um, and last week, as you're we having a conversation about preparing for this, and I was sharing with my colleagues how, for example, the in the healthcare space, how women give birth, it's usually it's believed that how it started is because there's this ruler who was really obsessed in watching women as they give birth. Um, and so the natural way and how it has it had always been happening was through the women being on their falls and um, the more natural position. But because the ruler was obsessed with you know watching women giving birth, who was a man, um, it ended up being that this is now the way it picked up and at the end of the day, this is still what we use um, till today in such a way that it, it was not obstructive for him to see. So it was easier for the woman to lie on her back. Um, but when you speak to midwives, um, particularly, for example, I had a conversation with a midwife who was saying that the current, that lying on your back position isn't, isn't ideal for the mother. Um, and how we need to have even you know more women getting into leadership and getting into um to yeah into leadership in these different spaces so that then these they, they are, are like a, there's more of a whole view um towards the problems that we are um experiencing and going through um and, and that's why even like the now in the healthcare space, how, why, why I like the respectful maternal care agenda that's going around that is more inclusive of a diverse, you know, perspective. Um, yeah, towards towards uh, towards healthcare for maternal, um, yeah, towards maternal healthcare. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Mia. So, um, Samira, do you want to share? Um, I'd like you to throw a little bit more light on uh, beyond equity, okay, mm -hmm. um, within leadership itself, okay, how, how can one perceive leadership in different spaces, um, any examples you'd like to share on that? Yeah, um, it's interesting that you said that the example I was thinking of um, when I, um, when I heard the conversation was you need different leaders when you're developing a product uh, from different life lived experiences um, in order to help the product to cater to the people. Um, because the world where we put the products out looks very different than a lot of the boardrooms or the C-level executive rooms that we have currently in the world. Uh, the product really needs to cater for all of them. And the thought processes and the lived experiences for all the people who are buying these products or using these products needs to be reflected in that leadership to direct the product and curate it in a way that a finished product can address the needs of everyone. And um, two examples come to my mind and um, is how the car seat belts um, are so uncomfortable. I don't know if, if others feel that, uh, but as a woman, I feel extremely uncomfortable with the car seat belt. I'm, I, I saw some examples of people putting uh, stuffed toys um, in order to remove it and um, instances like that. Um, and also uh, as an architect, um, you do need um, diverse uh, leadership roles in order to um, make the physical build space being experienced by a wide diverse group of people to be inclusive. And one funny example was um, when I was working on a restaurant uh, project, we had these very cool high chairs uh, for the high level bar uh, stools, kind of. They're recycled bicycles. 
and um, the bicycles that were kind of ordered or uh, brought in uh, in terms of um, design files and all of that was um, male bicycles which had the rod on them and as soon as um, some of the female staff in the office looked at that, they're like, well, this is not going to work, you know. It's not just um, just that it's gender, um, it's, it's not inclusive for gender, but also for anyone who would like to wear a skirt. Today, we are beyond um, identifying gender towards clothing. We have a very inclusive, diverse society. So towards anyone who's wishing and willing to wear a skirt, this um, this really doesn't work. And um, having that leadership and having an opportunity for leaders in the space where design is being uh, formed to voice their opinions really solves that problem. If that uh, female leader didn't know how to have the place to voice that opinion, that restaurant would have been built and uh, a lot of uh, customers would not have chosen to sit on this bus too. So I, I, through these examples, what I'm trying to say is we really need um, those lived perspective voices to be represented in the design phase. So the products are usable for everyone because we all look different and have different needs. Um, thanks so much, Samira, for that. So you're saying we should have a different leadership. And when we are designing, we should also consider leadership at the center to respond to our products or services. So Pedro, um, would you like to add um, your views on that? Yes, I totally agree with my mates. And we were also talking about the importance of having different perspectives in the sense that as we humans and our, our organizations are not machines, but our world um, is uh, not either. So we can't actually predict uh, and we can't give solutions um, to the challenges that we face right now if we don't include different visions. And these visions include people from different uh, cultures, people from different genders, and et cetera. One vision alone or even two, uh, we're not going to, to, to give birth to, to design the solutions that we actually need to face those challenges because they are quite complex actually um thanks very much so in your view what do you think um could change or should change um in terms of uh, these uh, this context that we are talking about i think fundamentally leadership roles should get more diverse um, and construction industry or architecture and uh, female representation or representation of um, persons of color is quite um, limited right now. A lot of countries don't even have statistics on it. And I know for the construction industry, it's about nine percent women. <laughs> and if we look at that, it's like, really? Is that is that how have few women involved um, in that? industry which is really the place we live all the cities all the buildings the roads infrastructure all of that and um it, it really um scares me when i look at the data that, that um shows us the reality um i feel we really need to make space uh, for more voices more diverse experiences and um have those really make our built environment products life better um, and um, it is going to do that. And YDC is an example for that. Uh, just, <laughs> just our whole team. I think we should just run the design world. <laughs> Starting today, you're, you're representing the entire globe, eight different continents, different industries, um, all advocating for design to do more, and um, save the people, and um, address climate change, and all the SDGs, um, and fight also uh, with human rights violations through design. So, um, yeah. I, uh, I think um, more design groups should look like YDC. Yeah, um, thanks so much um, for that. And then Rian, I see your mic is up. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, so well, I, how I see it is that um, most of the industries as we know them now, like from insurance to banking, to healthcare, to construction, like the, 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 forefathers were actually men and so they're the people who built 
um, these spaces and designed them the way they are today. And so for me going forward, and I'm not saying that, you know, now we should scrap everything because men are the, one, are the ones who created it. My view is that we need more whole perspectives. And so um, I in the city in two particular ways. And the first is we need to start asking ourselves questions. Um, yeah, ask, ask as many questions, like how, why do we do what we do now? Um, why do we have the work hours from eight to five? Like why, why is it? Um, and really is it representative of, or like just asking as many questions as we can about the current setup. Um, and the second one, um, I would say for women, it's a call for women to lead more like women and not lead like men. Because I feel like we have so many women in leadership right now. And I feel like for us to have had survived, for them to have had survived the space that, um, the non-inclusive space that they had to be in, they had to fight their way um, and really bring out their masculine energy. Um, but I feel, and, and we are grateful for that because then we get to learn and see that there are gaps um yeah and I feel like we need more women leading like women and not leading like men so yeah I, I feel like those two things would be really key going forward okay, thank you so much so um Pedro it's all yours <laughs> yeah um so now that Riora has talked about women leadership I was talking with them uh, last week that back when i was in my degree like most of the reference i could see in my field they were men which is not strange <laughs> either way and with the time i've uh, got like more women reference but i also realized that that could have a relationship with the fact that i have moved to sustainability as a whole. Like my practice was going in that direction. So there were maybe more women uh, leaders in that field. And also when I was uh, in Colombia, for example, and I saw other design leaders and they also were in, in this, uh, they were working in this direction. So maybe this traditional culture of man only man uh, leadership and the the way we've uh, built our environments it was sometime uh, some somehow related and we have to move to a different culture which is more diverse but we also have to to learn uh, from those who have applied sustainability from the beginning thank you so much for that and um, we'd we'll like to see if we have some questions from the floor or any feedback um, from members watching across the world. Any comments, questions coming through? Mm. Us, yes. <laughs> what to <are> you? <laughs> No questions as of yet that have come through via the chat, but while I have you on screen uh, with me, I did want to ask a question to all of you. Uh, if you could share with me what you're looking forward to most as part of your participation as this new YDC cohort. So I don't know, Samira, if you want to start us off. Um, yeah, we were discussing in our group that um, what, what would be really impactful from our each perspective and um for me i think i want to push legislation um in climate change and also in architecture and construction that really shows the importance of design and how that would be inclusive of people in urban spaces and um, how it could make our cities more livable and um, actually make our quality of life better everywhere not just in the top 10 cities in the world and um, or for cities to be rated as such but truly for all people and i think through YDC and the world design organization and looking forward to pushing for that 
and um, thank you for creating this platform. Pedro, I don't know if you wanted to, to share a few words and follow up to that. Okay. Yeah. So first time I was, I felt really, really motivated to, to participate uh, here because we've talked about diversity and there's such diversity here in terms of cultures, also genders, and even something which I think, I think it's uh, really valuable in design, which is diversity in, in design fields. Like we've got people with uh, who are more in communications, maybe graphics, maybe audio visual, people who are more industrial, um, strategic, also architects uh, as Samira. So I think that's really, really valuable. And if we all go in this direction of SDGs and sustainability and lead our practice there, I think it, it would be really, really impactful, not only for, uh, for us, I, I believe, I want to believe that for everyone. Perfect. Thank you, Pedro. And the last word to you, Nairiara. So I, I have seen the value of design and my experience in health care with climate change. And yeah, for sure, I am, I'm looking forward to just tapping into the you know, to the experience of all the 21 design, of all the other 20 designers and applying that as well here so that, um, yeah, because I'm really passionate about designing for Africa. And so, yeah, tapping into the knowledge and experiences of all of these um, 21, uh, 20 other lead, uh, designers will be really impactful for me and I look forward to that. Perfect, thank you so much. On that note, I think that brings us to the end of our session today. I want to take a moment to thank all three of you for joining us and sharing your perspectives on leadership with us. Thank you so much to Relitza for joining us to moderate this inspiring conversation. And I know I speak for the whole WDO Secretariat team when I say we can't wait to see what you accomplish over this next term.